Hi everybody, Crispin here with MoCap Online and Modus Digital. Uh, this is going to be a short tutorial, I'm going to try and make it short, uh, about retargeting animations with full root motion uh, between characters in Motion Builder. Uh, specifically we've got uh, the UE4 character, uh, Man the UE4 mannequin character, Manny here, and the CryEngine rig actually. Uh, since both of those platforms use root motion, and actually uh, this is based on an old, older file of mine. You guys might notice it says Motion Builder 2015. Uh, this is an older file, but everything we'll be going over is fundamentally the same in the newer versions. Um, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Brad Clark at Rigging Dojo. He pointed out this topic on the Autodesk forums to me, and I thought I would take a crack at it. Uh, another shout out to Colin and all the CryEngine team, some friends of ours. Uh, this is actually the uh, the real current CryEngine uh, skeleton with our Modus Man skin to it. And this rig with the Modus Man skin uh, along with a bunch of our mocap online. Uh, demo animations are included with the latest CryEngine when you download it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Thanks to CryEngine. Good folks. Uh, and quickly, if you haven't been to MoCap Online, quick plug, uh, please check it out. All sorts of uh, animations there, all sorts of different formats, as you can see right here, as well as some free stuff uh, to check out and download and test our stuff with. So please check that out if you haven't. Um, let's see, let's talk about retargeting. Uh, briefly. This is not a beginner tutorial. Uh, some basic working knowledge in Motion Builder is needed. Uh, I'm going to try to be clear for those more and less experienced in MOBU. Uh, that's short for Motion Builder. Uh, not go too fast or presumptuous and hopefully not go too slow to bore more advanced users. Um, Alright, let's cover some basics. We've got our UE4 mannequin as the source character and we have the CryEngine rig as our target character. They both have roots as you can probably see. Uh, the Cry is MMC for Modus Man Cry. Uh, he's not connected right now so he is not uh, moving. Uh, as folks in the forum pointed out uh, and everybody's probably noticed there is no actual um, reference, excuse me, there's no root slot in the Motion Builder character per se, but the reference slot is basically a root slot for all intents and purposes because the root in this case is the reference for the character uh, with the added uh, animation on it. It's that you know you're animating the reference which travels along underneath the character uh, in this case. Um, so uh, a caveat to that, though, is that the reference node in Motion Builder does not get plotted by default. So to get around just uh, which you can select it and plot it after the fact, um, or plot it first and then the character second, uh, but uh, that just gets uh, a little annoying. So it's much easier just to simply create a character extension and uh, add the, the reference node of your target to the character extension. I have an extension here. It has a lot of forearms and twists and things. I'm doing my own twist solving in this older version of Motion Builder. And so you can see the the root for the CryEngine translation rotation are in that extension and that way it just gets baked at the same time, plotted at the same time when you plot the character. So it's just a good uh, convenience that way. Works out really well. Um, Let's see, uh, we also, if we want to go character to character though, let's see, well, let's connect these two. There we go. So now CryEngine is following um, UE4, but the route isn't going along for the ride. Uh, so we'll just simply create a parent-child constraint that works really well. Uh, child is the, the target route, and we have the parent is the source route. And what you want to do this when they're both at the origin, uh, typically in a T pose, whatever. So both of the roots are both zeroed out, so it so it would seem. And uh, you want to snap that constraint so it keeps the uh, rotational difference, uh, the offsets between the two, since they you know will have different orientations. I believe the uh, the UE4 root has a 
has a local orientation of 0, 0, 0, but um, its global orientation is negative 90 on x. I think the, uh, the actual uh, cryengine root is 180 degrees off from that. So, so yeah, just snap it so you keep the offsets. Do not zero or just activate. Um, okay, so that's already been set up, so we'll turn that on. And now everything is following. Um, oh, also a note on naming conventions. Uh, obviously, any program, it's good to name your tools, anything you create, so that it makes sense to yourself and hopefully other people later. I use the, uh, the left and right uh, less than equal than is kind of like arrow spikes. So in this case, the constraint is CE root pointing towards UE4 root, PC for parent child. And wherever that spike is pointing, it lets me know that this is a parent child. And wherever the spike is pointing, that means that it is going that direction, the object being parented to the other object. That's my system. Any system works as long as it's consistent. You understand it. And uh, anybody else working on your team with it uh, understands as well. Um, so that's been snapped. It's working. Uh, another thing you need to make sure is because we do need to match the same global space, your target needs to have match source turned on. Um, if you don't have match source turned on, the two characters will drift apart slightly because you can see Manny is just a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Manny has uh, shorter shoulders, but our um, shorter shoulders, but our mesh has higher um, has a higher head. So whatever the fact, there will be difference in the uh, height, proportions, etc. So uh, it will drift slightly because Motion Builder will do its thing, and it will if the character is uh, considered to be slightly smaller. He will have slightly smaller strides and travel a shorter distance. And if it's bigger, the opposite, it'll travel a slightly bigger, travel a slightly bigger difference, a bigger, travel a slightly bigger uh, distance, and uh, it won't match up. But the roots will still be tied to one another. So you need their global uh, global positions to be exactly on top of one another at all times for it to be consistent. So you need to use match source uh, to do that. Um, so basically, it's that simple if we're to scale of one to one, which we'll get into to scaling uh, the other characters later. Uh, so, so all we have to do is, we'll just plot to the skeleton. We'll turn off the, uh, the root constraint. Let's go ahead and select the, uh, the root of our cryengine. Yep, he's an independent agent. And he is... He's baked, and he's doing the same thing. All is good. Uh, so that worked, and it's really that simple. Now getting into scaling, it gets uh, a little more complicated. Not much, really. Um, actually, uh, if, if you'll indulge me, uh, well, let's, let's talk about scale. Why would you scale a character? Okay, um, let's get into that. You would scale a character because your target character um, is slightly larger, or it could be a lot larger or a lot smaller than your source character. And what if you want to uh, match uh, things like, you know, do the make the wrist? I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, the UE4 Geo here so we can see the main rig better. There we go. Uh, for example, so we select the root. Um, this is, for example, obviously our characters are very similar, so I don't need to uh, make that adjustment. But let's assume that your character was either bigger or smaller, um, and you wanted to do, uh, obviously you need them to match because we're doing root motion, so... Well, okay, I'm getting off topic here, sorry about that. Let's talk about the, the reach. We want them to reach the, the wrists. Um, for uh, IK reasons, uh, for holding a weapon or exact hand placement somewhere or on an object, a prop. And so you want to use IK to control um, the position of those hands. You don't want them freewheeling. Well, obviously, if you if it's too small or too large, obviously if it's too small, his arms are going to do weird things that's going to look bad. 
um, you know, unless of course you turn off IK, which is not what we want to do. Uh, it's going to look bad, so you would scale your character to match approximately the scale of the source of the UE4 guy um, so that you can uh, match the proportions and the stride uh, better. So that's why you, that's a typical reason why you would want to scale. And when you plot, you, know, you plot something when it's uh, not at a, a non-scale, a scale of non-one, that's a crazy way to put it, uh, when it's not at a scale of one, um, you would set it back to one for delivery. That would be your, uh, your export because that it's, it's, it's real scale. Um, so yeah, so in this case, when we do this, obviously I'm going to make him smaller or larger to exaggerate and show the difference. So I'm going to change his scale. And of course you would scale him to match. I'm scaling him to not match to make a point. Hopefully I've made that clear. Let's go ahead and turn off the, uh, the IK so he doesn't look ridiculous. Let's go ahead and uh, plot this and show what happens if you don't do anything different. Um, let's see, let's make this a nice even scale, something, uh, let's do 0.75, why not? That's dramatic enough, that'll make a dramatic difference. Uh, so he's 3-4 scale, and of course Motion Builder is doing what it's supposed to do, it's matching the feet and the foot strides, he has to reach longer, that's because of what I'm doing. Um, and the root is following the root. So we'll do what we did before, simple plot. And we'll go ahead and turn off the root constraint, and it looks good. Until we set it back to its proper real scale, export scale, and then it goes foobar, because the root is traveling its normal distance, and the upper body is not, and that is because we're scaling the reference node, which is the root itself, and that means it is a local scale, not a scale of the animation itself. So that goes foobar on us. And uh, there is actually a simple fix for it, uh, which uh, indulge me for a moment. I have to poke fun at myself. I thought I was so clever uh, thinking through the problem but uh, it ended up being far simpler than I actually thought. Uh, here, let me show you real quick. I thought first I uh, tried a bunch of different, uh, figuring out the problem, I sort of whiteboarded. I was approaching with constraints like most technical directors would, and then I, so I said, okay, then I realized, okay, I'm just going to need a couple of... Uh, just parent-child stuff back and forth, a couple of parent-child constraints, or four to be exact, sort of redundant. That'll work. Oh, it's all working now. Then I would go ahead and uh, boil that down to a macro, you know, get all the math, and even made a couple of uh, custom attributes uh, for retargeting, turn it on and off, and uh, thought I was so clever as a mad scientist. Then at dinner, thought about it, what was the actual result, and it was, this was all completely unnecessary. <laughs> I was overthinking the problem. Uh, it is as simple as, let me get out of the, there we go, it is as simple as, the end result I realized was uh, simply creating a parental uh, relationship to the root, uh, you know, like uh, it needed to be the the root needed to be scaled by a physical a physical hierarchy parent. What what I mean by that that sentence I just made up is that you need to parent it to create a marker at the origin at a scale of one and uh, parent the root to that marker. It's really that simple and then you scale the marker instead and that means that you get a child relationship with the with the motion as well as the scale it was that simple and i replicated all of this with a lot of crazy constraints which really which worked but i had to use proxy objects anyway that's when it occurred to me that since i was using proxy objects in a hierarchy i could simply create a simple hierarchy so 
the mad scientist in me overthought it. So anyway, enough babbling. Uh, basic fix. So now that that's selected, uh, we will select that object. And we will scale the proxy object parent. We'll scale that down to 0.75. Let's reconnect parent child. There we go for the root. And now when we plot, let's go ahead, make the connection. We plot to the skeleton. Turn off. And of course it looks good. And now when we scale up the proxy parent, it scales the animation as well. So I can scale the character in real, whatever, I can scale him tiny or small because the local system is correct. No foot sliding. And of course I set that to a scale of one for export and it's perfect. So yeah, so it's it's that simple really. Uh, obviously you need to set it back to a scale of one and when you do the export you need to have, uh, typically it's good to have a selection set. Uh, if you're going to add uh, miscellaneous, uh, extraneous objects to your hierarchy, so uh, I've got a selection set which is just everything in the CryEngine rig that needs to be exported. It doesn't include like weapon little rig pieces I added and of course it doesn't include the extra parents so it's not hurting anything being there it's just you just have to remember that you're scaling with that not that and don't leave that at an off scale and think that you're at a base um, at a baseline it always has to be at a scale of one um, okay also what came up was the notion of jumping vertical motion with the roots and yes it does work just as well uh, with vertical motion and we can show that let's go to uh, let's go to a run forward run forward jump let's go ahead and connect it there we go let's all connect it up let's go back to uh, make sure that's okay scale of one and we can see Got the vertical root motion, he's jumping, and this is the uh, mobility, the mobility pro pack uh, from Mocap Online. Um, this is the actual, uh, excuse me, scene file that was used to uh, retarget all these for the CryEngine um, since the UE4 was done first. And you can see that's a heck of a jump. Kyle, uh, Kyle definitely did a lot of track in high school and afterwards. That is a hurdler's jump if I've ever seen one. Do can get some airtime. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, that's cool. So let's go ahead and scale the system uh, down to. I think I'm going to go 0 0.8. 0 0.8. This man, I don't know if he can stretch his legs that far. Once again, I'm. I'm. Nope. <laughs> I'm not trying to match scale. I'm trying to do an exaggerated. Um, mismatch scale to exaggerate and show the results. Okay, there we go. So now uh, he's a little guy traveling at crazy distance and jumping really high. Okay, uh, so now we'll go ahead and plot that. Plot to the skeleton. Turn off the root constraint. And he works just fine. And we can scale the system. Oops, my bad. We can scale the system. And he works teeny tiny. Or exaggeratedly large. And we put him back to the export scale of 1. We've got a relatively correct Yep, correct. Scaled root height as well as it's always under him. And it just works. And once again, the, all these things, uh, I believe that uh, pretty much 
when you do this, and of course you can you choose plot all uh, when you do this, as long as you keep your all of your solving settings in the character to character the same, all your poses m will match. For example, that was a, a turn and run forward right 135, the previous animation. The end of it is the start of the normal uh, uh, that was a that was jog yeah jog right 135 to a jog uh, to a jog forward so at one th negative um, 135 degrees so you would want the end pose to match the beginning of the uh, actual jog cycle which it does and as long as you keep as long as you keep all these parameters the same when you plot all takes at once they will uh, they will all have the same uh, the same reference that they're being uh, solved from and everything should match. That being said, things like needing to if you wanted to tweak the jump height or the, the exact root height or uh, double check uh, you know hands going through the body that happens when you try to do a, a retarget um, and checking to make sure the pose, just checking to make sure all your poses are exactly the same. You want to go to a control rig and uh, do the do your editing work on the control rig from there. Um, but if you do that, you don't want to use the exact same file that you're doing the solving in, character to character solving, because um, typically, uh, like in this one, there is, you know, like for for example, between the two characters, uh, I have a, a 3.6 offset on the, the chest forward so that they're in the, the same position, and these things will carry over, can, will carry over into your control rig, which you don't want. Plus, you don't want to screw up all your settings and your nice clean uh, solving file so just uh, you know use your selection set just whatever select all your objects that are just basically in the base character uh, not the character itself just the, uh, the skeleton you know the rig the rig skeleton pieces um, and then you do save selection and then uh, don't do save one take as an end each take is individual file just to just do uh, a new uh, save as a new file only the the takes the actual real takes not the uh, any work takes you want I call them clean files and that way you have a perfect clean um, file with nothing but all the beautifully solved skeletons and then import that into a new file where you are using the control rig and that way you have two separate files and don't uh, mess up your uh, editing rig with with solving parameters set and uh, or vice versa mess up your solving ring with editing and control rig parameters set that's about it yep and so that pretty much covers everything thanks for watching hopefully I cleared up a few things uh, hopefully I didn't wander around too much for you and uh, we'll see you next time thanks for watching